Hey everybody, welcome back to Tangle Tower, and we are solving a mystery of a murder that occurred in a locked room. So uh, we've interviewed a few different suspects, gotten statements from them, and we will be interviewing the last few in this one probably, and then uh, we'll see what the mystery, what, what mystery, uh, anything in the wardrobe happens after that. Dresses mostly. I never realized there are so many shades of black. More handwritten sheet music. More handwritten sheet music. She likes her sheet music. Empty. Empty. That is the bed of a vampire. I thought vampires slept in coffins. This is a vampire who needs firm support for their lower back. Oh, thank goodness. There are seven lit candles. Wouldn't want it to be dark in here. It's a metronome for keeping time. Weird looking metronome. Suspicious. It's ticking. Is it a bomb? It's supposed to be ticking. Not sure what those symbols are though. Use the buttons to rotate all four metronome dials to the loop at the top. Oh, I see. Yes. I did it. What do I win? Not bad. What happened? A little hatch unlocked in the back. Anything in there? Mm-hmm. It's a photograph. Part of a photograph. Hmm. Ripped photo shows a young girl with blonde hair and pink clothes. The girl in the photo is using a bright pink cassette player with matching headphones. The rest of the photo shows Fifi and Freya. It's hidden in Freya's room. I obviously have the other side of the painting. I mean the picture. Where is it? There it is. That's the other side. Hmm. There's something about that pink cassette tape. Something suspicious. Let's ask Poppy about it. I need to confirm something with you, Poppy. Confirm away. What can you tell us about this cassette tape? Is it yours? Uh, it belongs to Freya. She liked to have music playing while she was painting, you know. And do you know what kind of music is on this tape? No idea. Acid jazz? It's <laughs> piano music. Sounds an awful lot like your music, to be honest. Sure it doesn't belong to you? Why are we even talking about this? Cassette tapes have been redundant for a good few years now. The tape was found at the crime scene. It was in the gramophone. It's not mine. I'd never own anything like that. 
Why not? Not my color. You used to like these colors. You used to like these colors. Ugh, ridiculous. We need a clue to compare with the cassette tape. Something that proves Poppy used to like these colors. Hmm. Is it the photo? Let's take a closer look at this. Focus on the rip. The pink cassette tape found at the crime scene matches the pink cassette player used by Poppy in this old photo. That is not me. Yeah, it is. I'll prove it. It's a ripped photo. You look a little different, but Fifi and Freya are pretty recognizable. It's clearly a photo of you with your two best friends. Why'd you tear it up and then hide it? I think the answer is pretty straightforward. Poppy doesn't want to look like that anymore. Poppy doesn't want to look like that anymore. That's it. Makes this whole thing seem kind of irrelevant. Maybe. It depends on the reason. The reason? She doesn't want to look like that anymore. The passage of time is a powerful thing. Hold on. This means that pink cassette tape does belong to you, Poppy. It used to. I recorded some piano music onto it and gave it to Freya as a gift. Ah. Years ago. She Freya could have easily been listening to this tape at the exact moment she was killed. There's gotta be a connection between the tape, the gramophone, and the murder. There's one other thing I want to know. How did it get that crack down the middle? I have no idea. Hmm. An especially fancy cage. And it's home to three especially fancy birds. Three brightly covered, colored birds. My little writing desk. It's kind of cute. There's nothing written in the book, although someone's torn a page out of the middle. A rather magnificent bush, somewhat cruelly confined to a stone pot. There's a letter P carved into the side. Bird diagrams, hand painted. They're beautiful. Someone really knows their stuff. They're bird cages, but the birds are coming and going freely. Is that a metaphor? Oh, it totally is. I don't like mirrors. They steal your soul. How do you get your hair so symmetrical without using a mirror? I do it by weight. I can feel if one side is heavier than the other. Oh, just beautiful. What is it? Huh? Sort of a delicate jade, but what of a little seafoam green, is that right? Sorry? Your hair, dear! Which shade do you use? It's lovely! And that shape... You're really pushing the envelope. Oh, thanks. I do what I can to offset Grimoire's beige-on-brown ensemble. 
Detectives don't need to be brightly colored. We prefer to blend into the background. Oh, you're the detective? Delightful. Penny Pointer, pleasure. Is that short for Penelope? Officially, yes, but I never can be bothered with all four syllables of it. Penelope sounds a little ostentatious coming out of the mouth, don't you think? Uh, sure. Yeah. Whatever you say. Twenty-something, Aquarius, love to travel, and nearly all of my friends are birds. Travel? Where to? Anywhere at all, as long as it has species worth studying. Ornithology, they call it. I call it the only thing I've ever been good at. And have you studied the birds here at Tangle Tower? <laughs> but of course! Where else do you think I developed my love of the field? No matter where I go, I always find myself coming home to Tangle Tower. Because of the birds? Oh, no, because of him! Silly to admit, but I suppose I can't bear for us to be apart. Who are you talking about? Hmm? Oh, don't you know? My fiancé, dear Fitz. He's not really the traveling type, you see. Fitz Fellow, the very one. You're engaged to a member of the Fellow family? That's interesting. Hmm. I'm not especially interested in whatever tedious feuding goes on between our two families. Fitz and I find it much easier to stay out of it altogether. I awoke early and headed down into the greenhouse to see Fitz. He's always there, crack of dawn, every morning like clockwork. How come? It's where he's happiest. That and he has a great deal of work to do every day, watering, pruning, mulching, whatever that is. Do you help him with the work in the greenhouse? Oh, no, no. I, I wouldn't dream of it. I'd probably break something. So, you stayed with Fitz the whole day? No. In the early afternoon, he went back inside. Rather suddenly, as it happens. Did he say why? He didn't. Probably just a touch of heat stroke, the poor dear. He's more delicate than you'd think. What did you do after that? Let's see. I returned to the aviary to feed my birds. And how many birds are you responsible for? Officially four, but in truth it's more like 400. Can they not feed themselves? Of course, and they often do, but I think they just like the company. As do I. The music's really good. Sometime in the evening, I left the aviary and headed back towards my room. But in the hall, I spotted Uncle Pointer heading down the stairs. He was muttering something. Seemed a bit upset, the poor dear. I followed him down, but the grand hall was empty by the time I got there. Empty aside from Detective Hawkshaw, who was loitering over by the library. I don't know what it was, but she looked a little lost. I inquired about the professor, and she told me he'd gone up the fellow tower. I ran up the stairs, hoping to catch up with him, but Felix appeared and blocked my path. For some reason, he was coming out of Fitz's bedroom. He looked rather lost, too. I told him I was looking for Uncle. He suggested we look up in Flora's tower room. <coughs> we could see from the hallway. The door was off its hinges. I knew then something was terribly wrong. A moment later, we were gazing down on the body of poor Freya. Uncle Pointer was there. Fitz, too. Standing over in the corner with Fifi and Poppy. What about Flora? Of course, silent as ever. Uncle suggested we should leave. Give the others some space, you know. So he and I both returned to our rooms in Pointer Tower. So I haven't talked to Fitz yet, or the uncle. We can get into Penny's room now. Now? Like, right now? Yeah, why not? That's some flower. There's something weird about it. It just feels out of place. Brightly colored flower with an unusual shape. It looks very healthy and well looked after, all except for the fact that it's wilting, it looks like. Soil in the pot looks fresh and moist. It's also an unusual blue color. Hmm. Like maybe someone threw some paint in it. It's a birdhouse. Are those 
real birds? Nope, they're wooden. <sighs> they're using up all the perches. What if a real bird wanted to use it? Not giving me much of a clue. Just swap the position of the seven birds. And the white one in the middle would probably. Nope. There must be some logic to something to do with those white lines. Not giving me much to go on here. Oh wait, their eyes. I was kind of close. I got it. I'm impressed. Did the door open? What's in there? Uh-oh. Red flower petals were found inside. A message is angrily scrawled. Now I'll get her. A little tea set. Looks recently used. One of the cups has tea in it. What's in the other one? Birdseed. She said her that bed. Birds. It's like something from a fairy tale. Does it feel warm over here, or is it just me? No, you're right. Maybe the bed has some kind of heater. It's not coming from the bed. It's coming from the wall. That bed. It's like. Does it feel? No, it's you're... not coming from the bed. This is the too fa fancy. What does that mean? I don't know. Is there a way to investigate the wall that you said was suspiciously warm? Traveling cases. Empty. All of them. That bed. Does it no. feel it's not coming from the bed? I don't think there's anything else too pressing here. Less a little a bedtime. Let's see. A book. Romance novels, detective novels, and... What? This one appears to be both. Nice. Nice. The Romance Detective. All right, let's see. There's one, or I guess there's more than one room, but let's go this room. Let's go this room. You know, I've always wanted one of those. A mechanical solar system? What would you do with it? I would look at it. Wait a minute. Earth in the middle, sun on the outside. How old is this thing? Seems like it has something to do with the shadows. Nothing. So there are two ways to move the shadows. Rotate the planets and rotate the sun and moon. Saving a little time here.
also has to do with the lines on the table, I guess. That's the one. Hey, not bad. Did you hear that? Some... There's a little hatch underneath? What's in there? A bunch of paper. Looks like somebody's research. Golden Beetle. Four. The Golden Beetle, named for its exoskeleton, composed of a mineral approximately 90% identical to gold. It has a lifespan of several years. It fends off predators with a loud hiss. Records of over seven records of over 70, or 95 decibels. And by being completely undigestible, this misted has a somewhat spurious reputation for causing ill fortune for those that see it. Why was it hidden? Eh, it's tidier than my desk. Oh, the notebook is untouched. It's completely blank. So? Even the most well-used notebooks start off blank. It's a chart of the solar system. Which planet are you from, Sally? Pretty. Uh, it's too cloudy to see any stars right now. It's also daytime. Shh, listen. Do you hear them? The stars. They're whispering. So quiet. And yet, so loud. What are they whispering about? Are they spreading rumors about us? I shouldn't think they concern themselves with such insignificance. We are but specks of dust, you and I. Mm-hmm. Could the speck of dust start by telling me his name? You find yourself standing in the astronomy tower of one Professor Percival Pointer. Hmm. Seems like this tower belongs to the Pointers, and the other one belongs to the Fellows. Well observed, my dear. Tangle Tower is something of a duality, as it happens. Uh, meaningless boundaries, really. They exist only in our minds. Helpful. Me? Not much to say. Strictly speaking, I'm the current head of the Pointer family. And, of course, father to my precious poppy. And? A professional astronomer? Oh, no, that's just a little hobby. I mean, yes, I've studied the stars for over 35 years, published 17 books. Just a little hobby. Sounds like you're quite well known. You must bring in a good amount of money. Oh, dear me, no. My field of research has never yielded any kind of stable financial return. Nor would I expect it to. I am nothing but a humble interpreter for the cosmos working to translate its message so that I may share it with the world. Cool. Tell the cosmos I say hi. The day began as any other, with blissful, unremarkable routine. I took my usual morning walk around the gardens. Fresh air does wonders for the mind. Did you see anyone else? Penelope and Fitz were in the greenhouse together. I didn't bother them, of course. I sat for a while besides the pond in the garden. It's a favorite spot of mine. Eventually, I returned to my tower and buried myself in my studies for the afternoon. Did you use your telescope yesterday? Once the stars began to appear, naturally. For how long? I can't say. I've been known to lose hours at my telescope. Did you see anything? No actual discoveries, if that's what you mean. So you were all alone up in the astronomy tower. Must have been a while before you found out what had happened to Freya. Quite. Normally, I would be the last to find out about such a thing. But a curious tug of fate led me towards the fellow tower later that evening. I was at my telescope for the majority of the evening. But at one point, I returned to my desk to look something up in a reference book. I couldn't find the book I wanted, so I figured Fiona must have borrowed it. I left my tower and headed down towards the Grand Hall. I spotted Detective Hawkshaw coming out of the library. She looked impatient and slightly frustrated. Same as ever, then? Quite. I passed her by and went upstairs to Fiona's room. The door was locked, but I could hear shouting coming from inside. I recognized Fiona's voice as well as the voice of my own daughter. I had no desire to invade their privacy by eavesdropping, so I waited for them to finish and come out into the hall. Before I could ask about the book, Poppy grabbed my hand and took me upstairs along with Fiona. It was apparent that both of them had already been crying about something. 
We went up to Flora's tower. Freya was laying on her back, right in the middle of the room. Flora and Fitz were already there. They both looked stoic as ever. Felix and Penny arrived shortly after we did, and then Fiona went downstairs with Poppy for some reason. I quickly decided that I should leave also. I took Penelope with me, and we both went back to our rooms in Pointer Tower. Why did you leave so quickly? Wasn't there anything you could have done to help? Don't take this the wrong way, but the whole ordeal is fellow family business. I I'm quite sure they don't need me getting in the way at a time like that. Mm. Only a couple more rooms that I haven't explored. And I need to talk to this person. Which I will do next time. So we're getting into the mystery. We've even accused someone of being involved since we connected the cassette tape with uh, Poppy's old look. See, before she went goth. So, uh, yeah, we'll take it from here, solve more puzzles, investigate more suspects, and hopefully we'll tie everything together by the end of it. I uh, hope you're enjoying this uh, little mystery, and we have more mystery with Pentiment, even though it does seem like most of the mystery is solved. Uh, the girls that we're playing as, uh, her father's, was it? He tried, uh, was attempted murder on him, and now he's sick and she's taking care of him. It doesn't seem like he's going to pull through, but she's trying to finish his manuscript that they've been working on since they're the printing family. So uh, that's what you need to get caught up if you want to check out Pentiment tomorrow. And uh, we have more of this on Sunday and Valiant Hearts on another fun adventure game. A little less mystery focused and more war focused but it has kind of the same puzzly mini game kind of stuff the same similar animation so check that out if you like this and uh yeah i'll stop yakking at you and let you get on with your day and have a great weekend we'll see you next time bye bye